The Interactive Connectivity Establishment Framework, or ICE, is a crucial part of WebRTC. But have you ever wondered how it works? And how are Stun and Turn related? Hey everyone, this is Hector from WebRTC Ventures, and today we will talk about the three musketeers of establishing connections using WebRTC, ICE, Stun, and Turn. In the previous WebRTC Tips video, we talked about signaling and how peers need to exchange information in the shape of offers and answers prior to connect. This information includes ICE candidates, which tell peers how they're supposed to find each other, and it's our topic for today. We will look at how ICE candidates are gathered and what is the most efficient way to work with them. A ICE candidate is nothing more than an IP address and a port and gathering ICE candidate is the process of finding out all the possible combinations of IP and port where a peer is available for new connections. During signaling, each peer is responsible for gathering their own ICE candidates and adding them to their respective offer and answer in order to be shared with the other peer. Then, each peer's ICE agent will perform dynamic checks to all the received candidate pairs in order to determine which ones actually work and what is the best route to establish the connection with the other peer. Initially, ICE starts by gathering host ICE candidates. This uses the IP address assigned to the network interface of the user's device. Therefore, host candidates are usually local addresses that only make sense within the same LAN. These candidates are only useful for LAN connections. Next, the ICE framework will search for the IP address and port provided by the NAT device that allows the peer to connect to the internet. This is done by making a request to an external server known as STUN server. STUN stands for Session Traversal Utilities for NAT. It's a protocol that provides a way for a peer to know its public information. A peer will make a stun request to a stun server. The server will reply with the public IP address where the request came from. A stun server will usually reply with both UDP and TCP types of candidate pairs, although UDP should be preferred. These size candidates can be of type server reflexive or peer reflexive, the latter being a variant of the former. There is a third type of ICE candidate that is used when a direct connection is not possible. For instance, when the type of NAT doesn't allow it or when there are firewall restrictions. These are the scenarios where relay ICE candidates are useful. A relay ICE candidate is the IP address of a traversal using relays around NAT or turn server that appear made a previous arrangement with. In such an arrangement, the turn server will relay the media traffic from one peer to the other if a direct connection is not possible. As you can probably tell, the process for gathering ICE candidate takes some time, and only one of these will end up being used. So in some cases, waiting for all of them before sending the offer and answers might not be worth it. An alternative to make waiting times shorter is trickleize. This is a technique that consists of sending ICE candidates independently from offer and answers, and instead sending them as they are gathered. Now you know that ICE candidates are what makes possible the connections between the peers. You also know that there are three types, host, server and peer reflexive, and relay, and they can be added to offer and answers or exchanged independently using trickleize. ICE candidates allow peers to connect with each other, but if you need help connecting your real-time communication idea with your clients, at WebRTC Ventures we are experts at building high-quality real-time communication apps using WebRTC. Contact us to know more about our services at webrtc.ventures contact. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn as WebRTC Ventures and webrtc.ventures respectively. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more WebRTC tips. Let's make it live.